The identification of sources driving cosmic reionization has been a matter of debate for decades. Some suggest that quasars could be the source. Others propose that bright galaxies generate sufficient ionizing radiation to drive this process. Others think it would take over-densities of multiple galaxies to do it. So far, none of these have proven to be able to do the job. The James Webb Space Telescope was built in part to find the answer to what drove reionization across the entire universe. We've known since the early 1900s that it takes 13.6 electron volts to fully ionize a hydrogen molecule. This is now referred to as the Lyman limit. And all Lyman photons above this limit are referred to as Lyman continuum, or Lyman C photons. These are the photons that can fully ionize a hydrogen atom. All galaxies produce massive stars, which in turn produce Lyman C photons. But most stars are formed deep inside their galaxies, and the interstellar medium hydrogen gas inside these galaxies absorb nearly all the ionizing light, preventing it from escaping into the intergalactic medium where it can re-ionize the hydrogen there. Here's a web program that consists of both imaging and spectroscopic observations of distant galaxies gravitationally lensed by the galaxy cluster Abel 2744, also known as Pandora's Cluster. It was used in 2024 by an international team of astronomers to investigate potential sources for the era of reionization. The lensing magnification effect allowed the team to study very distant sources of light beyond the cluster. The white and red lines are the lensing critical curves. Lensing magnifications ranged from 2 to over 100 times their actual size. The team found eight extremely faint galaxies that would otherwise be undetectable. They are circled and numbered. Two of the sources, 12899 and 16155, are thought to be multiple images of the same galaxy. Here's an image of each source dwarf galaxy and the positions of the near-infrared spectroscope slitlet on top of each one. Lyman alpha light from these early faint galaxies traveled 13 billion light years to reach us. Their ultraviolet luminosity was measured and ranged from 120 to 581 million times greater than our suns. The ability of Lyman alpha emitters like these faint galaxies to reionize the universe depends on two things. One, their production of ionizing Lyman photons with enough density per unit of time. And two, the fraction of this radiation that escapes the galaxy into the intergalactic medium. The team found that these faint galaxies are immense producers of ionizing radiation at levels that are four times larger than what was previously assumed. The gray shaded region is the threshold required to maintain the universe ionized at Z equals 7. The blue curve represents the case when the escape fraction is just 5%. And the red vertical line shows the limit probed by this work. The study concluded that, at this luminosity, galaxies produce enough radiation to reionize the universe. If this small sample in one piece of the universe reflects the norm, then these results mean that most of the photons that reionized the universe likely came from early dwarf galaxies, even for escape fractions as small as 5%. In the same year, another team of astronomers was searching for answers to the same question, what drove the era of reionization? This team used the Cheers survey data. They found a galaxy they named EGSY 8P7 with a redshift of 8.683. Its light traveled 13.1 billion light years to reach us. We are now seeing this galaxy as it existed, just 600 million years or so after the Big Bang. Note that the image shows three interacting galaxies. Here's the view from Webb and Hubble, where Hubble was seeing only one galaxy. Webb sees a cluster of smaller interacting galaxies. Webb's CAM instruments were able to resolve smaller, fainter galaxies that surround the bright galaxy. Here's a closer look. A is the main target. It is the largest and brightest. 
B is 16,000 light years to the right. C is just under 20,000 light years to the upper left. Crucially, these smaller galaxies were interacting and merging with one another. Expanding the research, they found that all galaxies, in a sample of Lyman alpha emitters with redshifts greater than 7, have close companions. This discovery has had a huge impact on our understanding of what drove the reionization of the universe. This video showcases the dynamics of the system. Using the laws of magnetohydrodynamics, developed by Hannes Alfven in the 1940s, the team found that the rapid buildup of stellar mass through galaxy mergers both drove strong Lyman emissions and facilitated the escape of that radiation via channels cleared of the molecular hydrogen gas. They concluded that the rapid buildup of stellar mass through mergers presents a compelling solution to the long-standing puzzle of what drove reionization. 